Hey guys, I'm Tango Tango. I'm Panda Tang. We're Team Tang. So we're starting a new video series for Vietnam. Basically like uh, what we did last time from map pack 7, is it? Uh, discussing each map in Vietnam. And so, yeah, so our first map we're going to review is Khao San Temple on Conquest and we're going to talk a bit about Rush at the end as well. So Khao San Temple is a linear map, meaning the flag cap zones are pretty much in a line and there's also quite a few flanking routes to approach these cap zones. Um, as you may know that in our previous video, Calcent Tem Temple is our favourite map and uh, we're going to explain why uh, we like this map the best out of the ones. I think we mainly like Calcent Temple because it's quite infantry based. Yeah, there's, as you can tell, there's only the PBR in Kalsen, so there's no helicopters or APCs to annoy yeah. the shit out of you. Well, not APCs, but tanks. Uh, flag points are equally spaced out, so there's a fair advantage from both sides. Yes, so attacking Bravo to Charlie, or Alpha to Charlie, Bravo is kind of big distance, so you can't just rush straight into the next flag. Yeah, and even so, two people uh, lightweight Winning at the same time will meet up at the same time at Bravo, yeah. so that explains why. So if you both, if both teams rush from main base straight to Bravo, they are pretty much equally pro a pro fair yeah. advantage. Probably like a small difference, but you'll pretty much meet each other at the same time if you both run towards their lightweight or whatever. Uh, one problem about this, I personally think, is that there's not a lot of buildings to take cover in. Yeah, it's, there's pretty much only buildings inside the cap zones, in between them, the kind of transition zones. There's no buildings whatsoever. There's mainly like shrubberies and plants to kind of... Yeah, bamboos to take cover in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mainly for like camouflage, but when you spot it, there's probably like a few rocks. Yeah, there's a few rocks, but I find that even if you're hiding behind a rock, some guys can see a little tip of your head. Yeah. And you're dead out of nowhere, and you're always complaining that, you know, this rock should have kept me in cover, but it didn't. Shouldn't have been camping though. Yeah, but obviously when you're trying to regain health or something, it's not really fair, and especially when you're behind a rock. Uh, as you, we mentioned, there's PBR only, no vehicles, and this can pretty much control the sea area, so there's yeah. no flanking from there. Yeah, it's. If you can control the PBR properly with like, let's say one other squad member, because the front gun on the PBR is insane, you can pretty much make the enemy fly off. <laughs> as you can see in my previous video, it's a glitch or whatever. Yeah, but you can pretty much control the whole seaside, and if you can dodge, there used to be a glitch where you can kill the enemy by shooting the boat, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, there used to be a glitch where if you shot the base or the hull of the boat, It'll kill the drivers or the drivers or yeah, without destroying the boat. Yeah, uh, it's been fixed now, so it's pretty much more powerful than it was before. <laughs> yeah, you have to actually shoot at the person. Uh, the best thing about these boats is that they don't have visibility on Arf and Charlie because of the wars and well, that's the best thing about the map, really, because yeah. You just can't, you know, take advantage of... Yeah, and just spawn rape at Arthur or Charlie, because the wars pretty much stop any gunfire going in. Uh, though Brava does have some visibility issues, like, with the boats. Yeah, but it's kind of like... You're all trying to control Brava, because that's the, like, the main point to capture, isn't it? Yeah, there's fair advantage from both sides, obviously, because we both have boats. Luckily, yeah. there's not one side of the boat and the other has to fight <laughs> on land. And um, cap zones, what do you think about the cap zones? Uh, I think they're reasonable, but I think the main one I've got to complain about is Bravo because of the bridge and the water. It's just a bit weird because one side there's an open water but one the other side gets to jump in a house for cover. And there tend to be people hiding under the bridge, so... Yeah, I'll do that, to be honest. Because we keep doing that, people 
easily or they know what you can do. Yeah, it's easy to know where each person would hide to cut Bravo, pretty much under the bridge or in the house. I would say it's quite easy to throw some grenades inside the area because it's kind of in a ditch, isn't it? Well, yeah. So from like if you go after the Bravo, it's it's in the, like a slope, so you're going down at it. You can chuck grenades and. But I think Bravo, if you agree, is the hardest one to capture if you're both fighting for it. Alpha, Charlie, the. Uh... I'll say Alpha is the most easiest to capture because you literally just have to go through the door and you're already capturing um, the flags. Does anyone know how to get through that door? Those doors because they're always shut. Let's blow them up. Okay, shouldn't it destroy the door then? Yeah, if you got like a thumper into it or that grenade launcher or whatever, it will blow it up. Oh, I never knew that. I just always took the back route, you know, and over the walls. The back route is probably the best way to get in because you can pretty much use a wall as a cover. Your head will probably just pop out, and you can just like mow anyone down. You just like looking at the doors. And I personally think Alpha's the best in terms of s stay in the corner. You know, when someone jumps over, you got advantage on them. Like if you're trying to defend or capture. Yeah. So you're pretty much on the safe side when you're trying to capture. Uh, Charlie, you have to be just inside the inner barriers to capture. Yeah, around the temple. Uh, the temple is a really typical spot to kind of hide in, but there's like three entrances. If you have a whole squad in there, it's pretty easy to control who comes in and out. You you do get some flamethrower guys as well, through yeah. as well, chucking uh, grenades and whatever. Uh, Charlie's probably the most competitive. Yeah, it's quite fun to be between at Charlie. the two. Uh, one problem I do notice though is that. Uh, if you're spawning at the main base near Charlie, you have got the biggest disadvantage. Where, where if the other team captured all, all the flags, and, and in the spawn trap. Yeah, and you're in the spawn trap. Even with the restriction, they can shoot you literally in the spawn. So whenever you spawn, like most times, I've seen people spawn behind that big massive rock. All you yeah. have to be is literally on the left rock, side with that rock, and then you just keep shooting. Was Alpha? You've got like a big massive wall to protect you from and these visibilities. It's like more closed off, isn't it? Yeah, it's more closed off with buildings and stuff, so it's hard to see where people are alpha and it's easy for them to evade getting killed because they have the boat on the left side. You yeah. just boat off. Well, Charlie, the boat's literally in sight of everyone else. Whoever spawns at the Charlie main base has to go through the river if they plan to rush it. Yeah, so, and you pretty much be like a flashing light, <laughs> so it will be easy to get picked off, really. And it's not it's not really fair. And if you're at that point, it's probably best to leave the game. Yeah. At least with Alpha, you got a chance to capture, recapture in case you were spawn killed. Yeah. Uh, so now the rush versions of, or the rush version of this map. Uh, I would say it's really similar to either in the centres without helicopters. Yeah, I agree with that. Especially on the first set of bomb sites. The whole kind of idea of it is the same as either in the centres, because it's pretty much a straightforward map. Each each bomb point is quite open. So transitioning from another bomb site after blowing the two bomb sites at the start, go to the next one is really ridiculous. Yeah, uh, uh, we both personally agree that there's too much spread between the bomb sites. Yeah. It's literally a big massive travel just to get to the new set. And if you died, then you have to restart all the way back. Yeah. Unless you obviously got a squad mate who's just hiding in a corner. Yeah, I think you have to kind of booze that, but then the squad member who's acting as a mobile spawn uh, isn't really found him for enjoyment. Yeah. Um, but other than that, maps we we like map on conquest. It's our favourite one, as you know. We found the rush version. There was so many snipers, and it literally bored the yeah. crap out of us when we were playing the map. And to be honest, like on the attacking side at the start, everyone would just just like either in the centres. They'll snipe on the little where the boat area is. 
and then there should be a big sniper war and it's boring. Yeah, we've had so many games where we had to snipe, you know, against each other. So we personally like Conquest better than the Rush version. Yeah, Rush is too much. So uh, I think that's we pretty much covered the whole yeah. map. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.